big day today. Rats are back in McDonald's. Jack's guy's here just like been weighing off, but he split a Susie on his trailer, so Rob's just trying to find one off one of ours. I've got my red and black hat on, you'll see why in a minute. Because I've got to jump in the car and go on a big big journey to look at something that's red and black. On track call start. So I'm at an undisclosed location looking at a quad track and we're just going to take it down this track me and David and see if it fits but it does fit under here anyway we're gonna have a quick look underneath it check everything check the drivetrain gotta keep dead straight in here because it's a bit but it's not mega tight so you can tell we're just starting on a cold morning it's about four degrees so the urea is pumping in the exhaust making lots of steam like something out of Thomas the Tank Engine. So we'll go up here and then we'll, we'll have a look at, at it properly from the outside. Low on fuel, but we should be all right. Heater on nice and warm. We're in the field now with it, just, well, the corner of the field, just having a quick look at everything. A few things that we've noticed, there's a sway block there, which stops that linkage swinging that's come adrift. I don't know whether the bolts have snapped or come loose and it's come off, it should look like that. It's like two parts to it and one part's missing. So that could kind of slot behind if it goes up and down on a bend. Uh, no PTO on this model, which is a bit of a shame, um, unless you can get a chaser bin with a hydraulic pack on it, because I did think that we might have been putting on a chaser bin in the summer. Um, Dave's underneath checking the final drives and everything under there. Tracks are quite worn. Fine for what we're going to do it for the next year or so. No leaks on any of the any of the shafts coming out driving anything. You can't really see actually with the phones. Um, all the oils look nice and clean and bright in here. It's obviously been maintained. Well, we know it's been maintained because we know it's gone under a maintenance contract pretty tidy doesn't nothing looks bent or scraped it's obviously been getting a bit of road salt on it you can see on these corners here it's five years old now um it's got a bit of head rash on it there but nothing too major all that looks like it's been cleaned and looked after we've noticed though there's a little bit of oil around here but nothing too bad i mean big turbos like that do always breathe a little bit of oil and then there's a bracket there, that like concertina sort of exhaust bracket has split, so it's blowing a little bit there. Inside the engine looks nice and dry and clean, doesn't look like any of the gaskets are blowing for the exhaust manifolds or anything. All the belts look good. There's a damper, damper come off here, well, a little rubber block. That's that's fell off there so that's chattering when you drive along because when you turn the, turn that way that goes a bit closer there's obviously been some cables from whatever machines on the back trailing to the cab so it's just scrubbed the paint there but nothing major good tea cutting i think it won't look too bad it's climbing the cab it's got the red leather like a, a wag spec Range Rover the red leather got a little table behind that I don't know how that moves how does that move oh, there we go a little clip there you've got cup holders it's obviously got the GPS made into it all the interior looks like pretty clean it looks like it's had a bag of spanners rattling around it or a load of oily handprints Bonnet's obviously up, that's why you can't see where we're going, but generally it's in, well, I'd say it's in very good condition. we just got this screen up and it's got, it tells you what to do for each service. So when you click on it, it'll say, right, you need to do this, do this, grease the hinges, grease the following, whatever, but interestingly it's got this so you've got engine hours and drive line hours 
So that's how long the engine's been running for and that's how many it's been moving for. So there's quite a big difference, which probably suggests it's been used for drilling because when it's been idling, when you've been filling the drill, especially when it's got GPS, obviously GPS doesn't like being turned on and off. So it's probably been on tick over quite a bit of its life, not actually working hard, which is good. Yeah, if you look here, it's got hundreds of stickers stuck on top of each other. So the next service type's 1200 hour service. The hours have just kind of rubbed off it, but it done 4,800, I think we'd seen. Yeah, look, that's so clean, isn't it? Like, normally there's oily fingerprints, isn't there? Yeah, I think the only thing it needs is <laughs> tracks eventually, but we can worry about that after it's done another 500 hours, perhaps. Obviously, as a fire extinguisher that clips in here, that's that's missing. So it needs one of them, and then something's been catching there. Maybe they've had a toolbox strapped on there, and a cab wobbling's just scraped it. But all in all, pretty tidy. It's amazing. So, although it's heavy, because it's got such a footprint tread so light on the ground. Anyway, we'll, we'll put it back where it belongs. Right, here's a quiz question for you. What's that? So on the front of a Range Rover or a Volvo, it'd be for seeing if there's any cars in front, it'd be for your active cruise control. But what's it for on the front of this? Big thanks to David, the technical advisor, or the or the Oracle on quad tracks for coming and having a look at it with me. Anyway, go and get something to eat and um he's gonna take his pickup back. Tom. Tom Lamb lives up the road, so we might go and call him see what he's up to. It's it only just fits through there, doesn't it? Really? I wonder, can you get a combine through that? Oh, leaping at me because I've not got my seatbelt on. Because we're doing a whole five mile an hour. Where are we? Great Casterton? Yeah. We're just at Great Casterton. Colin's showing us his holiday let. Tom. Tom. Because <laughs> we've just been talking about Colin first. Tom knows Colin. And he's got a Colin first jumper on, who you saw in yesterday's video on the side of a bus. But. This is his holiday let, and it's it's basically a shipping container lodge with a steering axle on it and three-point linkage for moving it around. So he's put it up down by the river. It's closed at the moment because it's a little bit wet. But it's closed because it feels a bit waterlogged. So as soon as it opens again, we'll uh, we'll get it um, we've got, opened we've, up. We've got wet feet. Okay. That's a bed. And there's bathroom down there. Isn't it? Yeah, full-size bathroom down there. Log burner. Oh, yeah. Do you have trouble with them not being able to light fire, so you give them them fire logs? Yeah, they've got fire logs under the bed, so we <laughs> provide them with one fire log each, you know, each, each time night. Each yeah. time someone comes and stays. Or well, they've got like a fire pit outside. That's good, isn't it? The sliding door doesn't take up any room, does it? No, it doesn't. I'll show you the front linkage, the, the, the three point linkage. Ugh, it is wet, yeah, isn't it? It is a bit wet, isn't it? So there's the linkage drawbar there. Just bolted on. And then these are the hydraulic pipes, so obviously lifting the. Lifting the back wheel. Lifting the back wheels off the floor, so just chucking it there. So and you can move. steer it as well. Yeah, so they they lift it up. Oh, you turn the taps they on the turn back. The taps on the back, and you sit in the tractor going like that. But the first time I ever picked it up, I was going down the road, and I pulled the steering, and it went the wrong way, and it a tree. Oh. <laughs> Smart, though, isn't it? But yeah, it's just a bit wet. Hopefully, it'll dry up soon. Can I, yeah, but you could move it to a drier field, though, couldn't you? I might just get another one. <laughs> <laughs> there it is anyway and there's a good pub up there because we've just been to it for our dinner can anyone identify what we've just found in the wilderness here night machinery you can't really see can you because of the can brambles from here, I think. yeah can anyone guess what that is that's an old trail combine is it 
Tom's just showing us his new grade store that he built everything himself. Apart from the concrete panels, though, you bought them, I should presume. Bought the he bought the concrete panels, but he bought all the steel work, welded it all together and made it himself. And you can see a video of him doing it, the whole build, can't you, on his YouTube channel? Build your own grain store. I think there's like a four-part series to it. Yeah, so check it out on YouTube. But he's put these grids in the floor as well. So we have pedestals with the fans on the top. Well, Tom has pipes under the ground blowing the the air up into them so we'll go and have a look at the fans because they're behind that wall we didn't do it on our osr store because it's wider and where we could position the fans would have been at the back so the pipe work under the floor started to be colossal for the length it works on this shed because what is it 80 60 foot wide, 60 foot wide 100 foot long. yeah so it, it works because you're not blowing it as far whereas if you had the fans at the gable end and on our rape store it's like 120 foot so a lot of stuff goes under the ground and then we didn't want nine grids. Anyone want any spring barley seed? And he's got loads of spring barley seed, which must be worth a king's ransom at the moment. There's one of them there. Now that's just so you don't hit it with the telly on there when you're diving in. But that just sits on the floor. And then he's just shown us this. This is something we don't have a problem with, but because it's so flat out here, you get a lot of wind. So he puts these ratchet straps in a cross shape across the door, dogs them up tight. It stops roller shut doors blowing in. In high wind. Just on these hooks here, look. Yeah. Really simple. Let's have a look at the fans. Someone's putting a new pipe on his trailer there. His Bailey low loader, it's really long. Got a bit of bit of gravel rash on the front of it by the looks of things. Park an extra pile of gravel. But yeah, the, the pedestal fans just live on the outside of the shed rather than you have to climb round inside. So they're just blowing or sucking. No, you've got them sucking, haven't you? Yeah, they suck. They suck. And next These to fans us. are really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, they are good fans, actually. I think they're the same as what we've got. Are they three phase? Yeah. 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 God. It's coming in. It's full of water. Yeah. Tom's just shown us his yard. He scrapes the topsoil off. What, six inch topsoil? Down there, about that much topsoil, top and then it's just bedrock. It's nuts, that, isn't it? No wonder nothing ever grows here. <laughs> no soil and stuff. Like I can't believe this. You just scrape it off. You Look. scrape the topsoil off, and you're just left with what looks like a concrete yard. It's not completely flat, I suppose, is it? But well, it's not far off. No, no, it's good, that, isn't it? You know, just put a screed on it, wouldn't you? Some cows. Just say about 110 foot thick. This rock is 110 foot thick. So we don't if it if it floods, well it doesn't flood. We don't even get a puddle. It just goes. It just goes down the cracks. It goes is the rock straight down the cracks. So you know all that rain we had a few weeks ago. Yeah. There wasn't even a puddle in this yard hardly. Just gone. Are you sure? There's a little puddle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking it's very fancy steps. I need a handrail though. For his to the liquid first. Tanks. And I need to, I've got to put a pier cap on top of here as well. I'll stop that filling with water. Yeah. How are you going to stop that filling with water though? Uh, gonna, uh, they've got oh, you've got a tap they've, there. They've got sump pumps as well. And sump pumps. That's his fertiliser storage tanks. Need to stand in it for scale. <laughs> oh, I would stand in it, but I can't. Where's the ladder? It's all right, I'll let you off. I'll let you off. <laughs> Tom's building a pit for working on things. One of the things he's working on the driller under the baler, so he's put a trench in to get all the electrics and pipe work and air pipes in and there's concrete going in the bottom then there's block work going down the sides then backfill and then metal on the top to run the jacks down yeah it'll have a lot of angle on so then we'll have a lot of sliding jacks and stuff yeah so it's main, the main reason I'm doing it is for the Bardestad drill because you cannot get underneath it so at least with this I'll be able to back it under and I can get to all the coulters and do everything and it's safe then instead of having to try and lift it up and try and get underneath it yeah yeah and like the baler as well even if you want to change times on the baler i'm going to lay underneath it just stand under it and do it all don't you have to put something in as well to make sure gas doesn't build up in the bottom is it like a fan or something this is the first time i've heard of this yeah no i'm sure i'm sure there's something that you're supposed to put in because you... door open well maybe but i'm sure there's some heavy gases that someone will comment on the video no doubt but um I'm... Do, I'm sure yeah, I'm sure you put a ventilation fan in the bottom or something. It's What's something... going on tonight's video? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll do it tonight and then I can read it before we do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments the spec of a pit. Does anyone recognise this? This telehandler? 
You may have seen him on the side of a bus. Does it just, uh... <laughs> this is Bailey Green Mezzanay. Might be better putting some of that on the front of your trailer, it's got a bit of gravel rash. Not sure if ours is a Lincoln welder, but it's not that fancy. Proper. Oh, you even got the Lincoln mask as well. Yeah, that was a freebie. <laughs> <laughs> There's a forward control Massey 590 night sprayer. Was that one of the first they built? Uh, it was, yeah. One of the first forward controls. Still works as well, doesn't it? Before I hit the road, I'm just going to show you. He's very proud of his broken trailer. But this is what we were looking at the other week, isn't it? That first spreader on the back. Um, the 8S, as they call them, with the immense visibility. Got his box for his Vaddy drill. It's like a joystick. Something for the Massey fans. Massey. Good to catch up with Tom while I was so close. Anyway, next stop home. Hopefully we won't be stopped on the M6 because I think I'm going to hit it at rush hour, which is going to be a pain. Back at HQ now. Going to get me tea. Sorry the video's late because I had to drive back and edit it. But here's Ian with the birthdays. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. It's a big one. Evan Brewer is 7. Ellie Rogers is 22. Bethany Biscom is 10, Charlie Wolfen is 36, Hunter Wilson is 8, Alex Stevenson is 50, Charlie Quick Richardson is 6, Ian Germany, happy birthday to you, and Jones. It's looked like an autocomplete where it presses the form and you don't want it to, and it just says Jones, and I don't know who that is or how old you are. Happy birthday. That is somebody out there, isn't it? If your name is similar to Jones and it's your birthday, that's all of you people. <laughs> 58,693 raised uh, across 5,100 donations. Keep them coming, all for the North Face uh, Ambulance. And the, if you want to be on the bumper, there is a link under every video.